Hey, what's going on guys? Josh Refusion here. And today I'm gonna to be showing you guys the best streaming settings for OBS Studio in 2024. Now guys, a couple months ago, I made a video on the best recording settings for OBS Studio. And that video got a lot of love on it. And there was a couple people asking me to make a streaming tutorial. So here it is. And if you guys haven't already heard, I'm doing a Discord Nitro giveaway in the Discord server once we reach 1,000 members. If you guys aren't already in Fusion Here Cord, you guys should really join. The server's been growing a lot lately. We have a lot of different topics, different channels, and you guys can find updates about the giveaway in the giveaways channel. All right, guys, so the first thing we're gonna do is actually download OBS Studio. Awesome thing about OBS Studio is you can download it on Windows, Mac, or Linux. It's available everywhere. In my situation, I have a Windows computer so I'm gonna click on Windows. Next you're gonna want to save the installer somewhere. You're gonna want to run the installer. It's gonna say do you want to allow this app to make changes to your device? You want to select yes. Welcome to the OBS Studio setup and I can't continue past this point guys because I'm recording with OBS Studio but it's just gonna ask you where you want to save OBS Studio. Pick where you want to install it click install and you should be all set. So now that you got OBS installed, let's double click on the shortcut and launch it up. Now that we launched up OBS Studio, it's just gonna be a blank screen here. I know at first OBS can seem overwhelming from all the tabs and settings there are, but by the end of this video, you guys will have a really good understanding on how to set up your OBS Studio for streaming. So the first thing we wanna do is get to the settings. You can do this by either going to the top left and clicking on file and then clicking on settings or by going in the bottom right and clicking on settings. Now the first thing I want you guys to do is hop down to the advanced tab. We're going to do this because the advanced tab actually has the least amount of settings to change out of any of the OBS Studio settings, so we might as well knock it out first. Alright, now that we're in the advanced settings, the first setting you guys might want to change is the process priority. I talked about this in my last video on OBS, the one for recording settings. What the process priority does, if you set this to above normal or high, it's going to make OBS Studio use up more of your CPU usage to make it run higher than other applications. So if you have a good CPU and you notice that your OBS is lagging when you're recording, I recommend setting this to above normal. This is actually the case for me. I noticed that my OBS studio was lagging when I left it on normal. Since I've changed it to above normal, it runs much better. Next, coming down to this video tab, we wanna leave the color format at NV12. We wanna leave the color space at Rec 709. The color range you wanna change from limited to full. And right down here is where we can set a stream delay if we'd like. So if you're a big enough streamer that you're getting stream snipers joining your matches and stuff, what some streamers do is put on a stream delay so that those stream snipers have a harder time getting into their matches. So to do that, you just hit enable and then set how many settings you'd want the delay to be right here. But I'm not gonna do that for my stream example. Now that we're done with the advanced settings, you wanna hit apply. The next tab we're gonna jump into in the settings is gonna be the stream tab. This one is pretty easy to set up. All you guys wanna do is go on to your streaming platform, whether that be Kick, Rumble, Twitch, YouTube, and you wanna copy the server and then the stream key and paste them in here. And then you wanna hit apply in the bottom right. Next, we're going to hop into the video tab under settings. Again, I'm doing the tabs with the least amount of settings and I'm leaving the ones with the most to the end. Now to explain the base canvas resolution and the output scaled resolution, this is if you're trying to downscale your stream. So let's say your internet isn't that good and you're playing your game at 1080p, but you want to stream at 720p. That's where you would select that option right here. But if you are downscaling your stream and you're using a downscale filter, I recommend using by cubic. Personally, I like to stream in 1080p. So what we're gonna do is hit the drop down arrow right here, and we're gonna move this up to 1920 by 1080. For the FPS, this really depends on your internet. I recommend most people just leave it on 30 FPS. A 30 FPS stream is fine. If you do have beefier internet and you wanna have a nicer stream, then bump that up to 60. Now we're gonna hit apply in the bottom right. Moving over to the audio tab, the sample rate depends on your microphone. So every microphone is different and has a different sample rate when recording. You can see what the sample rate for your microphone is by looking up change system sounds. Under here, double clicking on your microphone, going over to advanced, and then when you click on default format and you click on this drop down, you wanna select the best option down here at the bottom, and this is the sample rate for your microphone. So as you can see, 48,000 hertz. Coming back to OBS Studio, I'm gonna leave the sample rate at 48 kilohertz. For the desktop audio, this is gonna be what your viewers are hearing as your game sounds. So I recommend setting this as your headphones or whatever your desktop audio is coming out of. Next for your mic, slash auxiliary audio this is obviously your microphone you're gonna want to find your mic and select that and what's cool about obs studio is you can have multiple desktop audios and multiple mics on here at the same time on the same stream 
Now, before we hop into the next settings under the output tab in OBS Studio, I recommend you guys run an internet speed test. Now I'm using speedtest.net, and the reason we're doing an internet speed test is we wanna see what our upload speed is, because our upload speed matters very much for live streaming. The higher number upload speed you have, the higher quality live stream you can have, and the more smooth it will be. So I just finished my speed test and I got an upload speed of 20.66. This is pretty good. I know that I can live stream at 1080p 60 FPS. All right, now moving over to the output tab, the largest tab and the most settings to go through out of anything else in the OBS Studio settings. Up at the top, we're gonna wanna change this output mode from simple to advanced. This is gonna give us three more tabs up here at the top. We're moving into the big leagues, boys. We just went into advanced settings. Now hopping down into these streaming settings, the first setting we're gonna go into is the encoder. The encoder is what's actually doing all the work, recording your screen, recording your gameplay. What the encoder does is let you choose between your CPU or your graphics card for recording or streaming with OBS. So if we wanted to use our CPU, we'd leave this on X264. But if you wanna live stream using your graphics card, then you're gonna to wanna to select one of these graphics card settings. If you have an AMD graphics card, it would say AMD. For me, I have a NVIDIA. So the best option to choose is NVIDIA NVNC H2.64. This is using my graphics card and my processor at the same time, but you guys can just play around with it. If you do try this option, you're getting lag. Try switching it to just normal X264. That's personally what I do. I either use X264 or NVNC H264. We're gonna skip the rescale output tab, we're not doing that. For the rate control, there's a lot of arguments regarding whether to use CBR or CQP. Well, for live streaming, you're actually required to use CBR for some certain live streaming platforms, such as Twitch. Do so you guys just wanna leave this on CBR? Now for the bit rate, now if you guys are doing 720p streams, I recommend doing a bit rate of about 3,000 to 5,000. If you're doing a 1080p stream, I recommend doing a bit rate of 6,000 to 9,000. 9,000 is actually the limit on some streaming platforms, so I wouldn't put your bit rate above 9,000 kilobits. Next for the keyframe interval, we're gonna wanna set this on two seconds. For the preset, you guys are gonna wanna leave this somewhere around the middle, as you guys can see, it's telling you how your recording quality is gonna be. You're either gonna compromise the quality for faster and smoother recording, or it's gonna be a little bit more choppy and you're gonna get the best quality possible. So you gotta pick what option you want. I think medium or slow is the best option. We're gonna go with medium. For the tuning, you can either choose high quality, low latency, or ultra low latency. Now this really has to do with the speed of your live stream, how fast your viewers are seeing the stream. If you want them to see it as fast as possible, go with ultra low latency. But do know that that's probably gonna compromise some of the stream quality and make it look worse. So I personally like to leave it on low latency or even high quality if I want that to be a really good picture. So we're gonna go with high quality. For the multi-pass mode, we're gonna wanna set this on two passes to get that full resolution. Profile, we're gonna wanna leave this on high. You're gonna wanna turn off look ahead and psycho visual tuning. And under max B frames at the bottom, we're gonna wanna set this to two. And now moving over to the recording tab, this is gonna be if we wanna record a clip while we're live streaming. You guys can set your recording path here. This is gonna be where your clips are saved. How many audio tracks you wanna have, I recommend putting on two. Your recording format, you're gonna to wanna to change this from MKV to MOV. MOV is the best because it looks like an MP4, but it saves space. For the audio tracks, you're gonna to wanna to set this on two. This gives you two audio tracks, your mic and your desktop audio. Now moving over to the audio tab, you guys are going to want to set the audio bitrate on everything up to the max 320. This is going to ensure that your microphone and your desktop audio is all running at the highest quality audio that it can. We're not going to mess with the replay buffer and we're done with the settings. You guys want to hit apply in the bottom right. All right, guys, and that's pretty much it. I'm not gonna be showing you guys how to set up the scenes and the sources for the live stream in this video. If you guys want another video on that, on how to actually set up the game capture, your webcam, how to have stream alerts pop up, like when somebody follows you or donates, let's try to get 100 likes on this video and drop a comment down below, letting me know to make a part two to this video. And I will do it, guys. I hope this video helped you guys out in getting the best streaming settings for your OBS studio. I've used these settings in the past and it makes for beautiful 1080p 60 FPS 
live streams with no lag at all. Say goodbye to your old grainy laggy live streams. But anyways, guys, if this video did help you out, make sure you guys drop a like on the video as well as leave a comment down below letting me know that it helped you out. Make sure you guys subscribe to Fusion here for more helpful videos like this in the future. And with all that being said, I love you guys. Have a good rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one.